Circle theory and geometry is a killer topic, but we're gonna just take it on right here. It says in the diagram below, E, C, G, and F are points on the circumference of a circle. E, G is the diameter of the circle. This is E, G, do, 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 the diameter. It says a tangent, A, E, B. This is a tangent, it's parallel to the line C, D. And since the tangent is parallel to the line CD, what do we know about, look at this. We know that this right here is a transversal line. And so co-interior angle sum to 180. So automatically, since this is 106, we know that this angle is going to be 74 because co-interior angles must sum to 180. We know that the 106 plus the 74, that would give us 180. Yeah, because by co-interior angles. I'm just writing down what we would know straight away. So let me erase this now. We don't need that right there. I just put on the 74 based on what we can extrapolate. Okay, let's continue now. It says determine each of the following and show detailed working. Find angle E, C, D. Angle E, C, D, we need this angle right here. Okay, we need this angle. Now let's see how we can extrapolate this angle. Now the first thing is we know that this angle is 74 by co-interior angles. This angle is 68. So what that therefore means is that this angle right here is going to be 180 minus 68 plus 74. So what we're saying is, that angle right here, let's put it in our calculator to work it out for us. That angle right there is 180 minus in bracket 68 plus 74. And we work that out, we're getting 38. So this angle in here so is 38 degrees. If this angle is 38 degrees, look at this. Touching the circumference, touching the circumference, touching the circumference, Touching the circumference. So what happened? This is a cyclic quadrilateral. Since this is a cyclic quadrilateral, we know that the angle up here is going to be, the angle up here is clearly going to be, da 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 da, as we rightfully say, this is 180 minus 38. 180 minus 38, I believe that's 142. And that's angle CGF. Wait, why are we finding CGF? Nice, um, that's, that's not what they wanted. They wanted ECD and I have it on the diagram, but no worries, sorry. We want this angle right here, okay? To find this angle right here, we know that the line CE is a transversal line. And so that means that Z angles are equal. Z angles are equal this is parallel to this, so we know that this is 68 degrees. ECD is 68 degrees. How do we know? Because of Z angles. All right, this is Z angles. So if you want to give them a full reason, you can tell them that CD is parallel, this slash mean parallel, is parallel to AB. So we can tell them, hence, since CD is parallel to AB, hence, we can tell them that CE is a transversal line. And so therefore, by Z angles, ECD is equal to angle ECD, angle ECD is equal to angle AEC is equal to angle A, B, C. And that's it right there. Nice. That's two marks. Okay, let's see what's happening around there. That wasn't too bad. The next part says find angle C, E, G. Angle C, E, angle C, E, G. 
Oh, nice. They want angle C E G. No, that is nice. Now, why do they want angle C E G? Angle C E G, look carefully. C, this is C, this is G, this is E. So the angle that they want is, I'm drawing it in this pale blue greenish color is this angle right here. If this is the angle that they want, what do we know? We know that angle between a tangent and a radius, because remember OE is a radius. OE is the radius. An angle between tangent and radius is 90. So since angle between tangent and radius is 90, then we know that this little piece right here, so is going to be, see it here, this little piece right here, so it's going to be then 90 minus 68. 90 minus 68 is 22 degrees. That's what we do now. All right? So that is 22 degrees. So we can bring around here and tell them to CEG is 22 degrees. What's the reason? Angle between tangent and radius is 90. That's the theorem we use. Angle between the tangent and radius is equal to 90 degrees. So we can tell them, hence, we know that CEG, that angle, angle CEG is equal to 90 minus 68, which is 22 degrees. That's the working out. Okay, next part says it wants CGF. Let's put those points in red. C, G, F. See, they already work. Write it down. That was the first one we'll find. 142. We didn't even need it yet. So that is equal to 142 degrees. 142. The reason is because I'm just going to write it out right here. C, G, F, C, G, F, E forms a cyclic quadrilateral. It forms a cyclic quad. And what we do know is that opposite angles, opposite angles in a cyclic quad sum to 180. So since opposite angles in a cyclic quad sum to 180, then all we need to do is just say that this angle C, GF is going to be 180 minus the 38 degrees. And when we work, that's what we get, 142. And that's how we get that right here. Nice. So look at that. Circle theorem wasn't too bad. This was actually really easy. Really easy because we get that this angle, we get it, of course. We get it nice and easy. That angle is... 38, and then now, since this part is 38, opposite angles in cyclic quad is 180. So this is 180 minus 38, and we get 142. Circle theorem, easy man. Nice. Let's look at part B. Part B, it says, from a harbor H, the bearing of two ships. Oh no, bearings, this is trigger nitro. Don't worry guys, we're gonna match it up. From a harbor H, the bearing of two ships Q and R are 69 degrees and 151 degrees respectively. It says Q is 175 kilometers from H. So Q is 175 kilometers from H. So this is 175 kilometer, while R is 242 kilometers from H. So just put on that on the diagram. Now it says calculate the distance between the two ships. Calculate the distance between the two ships. The two ships are, remember, stationed at Q and R. So we need to work out the distance Q to R. Now, this information is key. To put in the 151 degree bearing, it says that from a harbor H, the bearing of two ships Q and R from harbor H is 151. So from H, all of this angle right here is 151. So that means that the 69 degrees 
plus the missing angle here, so x equal 151. So let us go ahead and work out what x is. To work out what x is, we're just going to take out our calculator and subtract them. 151, let's put it in. 151 minus 69, and I am getting 82 degrees. So that means that x is equal to 82 degrees. Since this angle is 82 degrees, what we can do is use cosine rule. Whenever you have two sides and an angle between them, we use cosine rule to find the other side. So now we're gonna use cosine rule. So let's use cosine rule. So using cosine rule, this is what we do know. We know that QR square is equal to the first side square 175 square plus the second side square, 242 square minus two times the first side times the second side, then multiplied by the cosine of the angle and the angle is 82 degrees. So put all of this in our calculator, guys, the calculator really smart. Just put everything in your calculator one time, 175 square plus 242, square minus two times 175 multiplied by 242 multiplied by the cosine of 82 degrees you put all of that in the calculator and that gives you 77401 so to get qr we need to square root it so the distance qr is the square root of 77401. And then we'll just punch that into the calculator, square root answer. We get 278, 278 kilometers. Now you probably say, but wait, why never put the point zero? Seven? It said to the nearest kilometer. So we don't need to do that, that's the answer. 278 kilometer, nice, yeah man. All right, now this says, question, it says, calculate how far south due is ship R of Harbor H. So calculate how far due south is ship R of the Harbor H. How far due south is ship, how far due south, how far due south is ship R from the Harbor H. So this is pretty much what they mean. How far do you solve? How far do you solve? If you were to just draw like a right angle triangle, how far do you solve is ship is ship. Why do I keep pronouncing the word incorrectly? It says calculate how far, far is distance. How far do you solve is ship R of the Arbor H. So working out how far do you show ship R is from the Arbor H, that is this distance that they want. Let's put it in black. This distance they want, how far do you show? To find out how far do you show it is, remember this angle, it is, this angle is what? Um, if the whole of this is 151, then this angle would have to be 180 minus 151. 180 minus 151, which is 29 degrees. If that is 29 degrees, yeah, then this now is going to be what? You have the hypotenuse 244, 242, and so this side is the adjacent. So you have to remember, so katoa, so ka, so ka, so ka, so ka. So therefore, what that means is going around here now, we can see that the cosine of 29 degrees, we can see that the cosine of 29 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is what we want, which is the salt distance. We don't know, let's just call the salt distance X over the hypotenuse 242. So X is going to be equal to 242 multiplied by the cosine of 29 degrees. And you put that in your calculator and it tell you how far do you saw ship R of the Arbor H is. So let's punch it in our calculator. 242 
multiplied by the cosine of 29 degrees. That is 211.6 kilometers. That is how far the surface is, 211.6 kilometers. Nice. And that takes care of question number nine. Yeah, man. <laughs>